so this is the road the kind of road we have been taking on so far I don't want to do a big video here but just so to see this area here we have encountered a few houses along the way but not too much there is one right there and some houses right there but it's been very flat so far after the first hour nothing uh, to speak of but we're on the Inca Trail we have just entered basically the second hour I think we're starting a trail somewhere around yeah I'm doing my best we, we start around 905 or in that neighborhood and uh, now this is what I'm saying we have just about completed the first hour but this is the real area we first place where we have actually entered with the people Just do a recording right here. All those people here on the way. That's uh, something we haven't seen in the first hour until just now. <laughs> so that would be for the recording for now. But it's a beautiful village. I'm here, Molly. I'm checking my path, my path there. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So this is Victor, just ahead of us. He's our leader guide. It just happened we're just behind him for the time being, anyway. So that means we're at the, at the front of the pack for the time being. There. But look at the beautiful view. It's just gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. I'm keeping an eye on the, everything I'm looking ahead of me too. Yeah. Stop the recording for now. There we are. We made a second stop. It's about. Let me see my watch here. 10:50 in the morning. We came to maybe our second real little village here, right on this path uh, on day one of the Inca trails. And there are more tourists here, and this is our resting place at this moment. As we are looking here, taking a little break. And those are the stairs. Snack bar here. Cute little area to step over. You see more building, more farmers. Just cute all the way there. So nice. Toilet here, one soul. I think this is the name of the game. Some more mountains here. Just beautiful. Our resting place. Our real first resting place. So we're on day one of the trick. It's 11.25 in the morning. And this is our first real hill going upward. It's pretty, uh, pretty nice, and we have three donkeys just past us, and there's a couple of porters also at the top there that also pass us. Very nice. Taking a little bit of break at the same time. There's the people behind us here. Look at the gorgeous view we have of the surrounding. So it's about uh, 11.30 right now, day one of the Inca Trail. We came to a very nice area with a very stiff uh, climb actually. First one of the Inca Trail. It's pretty much uphill. We're actually over there earlier. On this side we came from this area over there. And we did this uh, semicircle. And this is the gang here behind us. And a couple of porters are about to pass by me. I will kind of step aside. There's actually a bunch of them. And try to step aside the guys. And this is the area. 
Looks pretty stiff and clean actually. But uh, what a view. What a beautiful view. So it's 11.30 in the morning, we left uh, our campsite 1 uh, on uh, this day 2nd around 6.37, so almost 5 hours ago and since we reached uh, Dead Woman's Pass this is the kind of stone we have had to deal with going downward steady 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 I have to turn very, very slowly and it is raining right now, not too high but not too, with too much intensity, but it is raining and those stones, the way they're put together, they're pretty awkward to navigate. So it's uh, it's not that you feel out of breath here because you're just going downhill, but you have to concentrate and use your poles and real pay attention to the fact that uh, this is not a perfectly shaped uh, uh, area here to navigate. So you really have to uh, understand the path you want to follow and uh, focus. I think I just heard my wife somewhere. I would like to do some recording of the mountains around, but we're already surrounded by mount by fogs or clouds all over. So it's day two. It's 12 o'clock exactly, and we've been descending uh, for just maybe under an hour now. All of those very difficult steps. Those they don't look too bad from this angle. Well, as you're coming down, they can be quite awkward at times. And this is actually an easier pathway down. This is a lot flatter. I would like to be able to show you the neighborhood, the valleys, but we're really buried in, in fog or, or in clouds. But really, at this point, the last hour has been just downhill. Something similar, uh, although some of the stairs are easier and some are quite difficult to navigate. It's a bit raining, not heavily, just a bit of drizzles. Uh, but uh, just to show you again, this is where we came from. And now we're heading uh, to our camp for lunch. Not our camp, but our location for lunch before a long afternoon again. But the worst is kind of beyond us, but we are having another a second high pass due this afternoon. That will bring us back to 3,900 feet high, 3,900 feet. So, day two Inca Trail, it's 12.45. It means that we left uh, our campsite uh, at 6.37, so over six hours ago. And we arrived about five minutes ago, Olivia and I were the first ones from our group of 10 to make it to the uh, lunch site area. So this is uh, where we are. For some reason they put the uh, tent up, even though it's only for lunch. I don't know if that means that they want us to take a little break, a little, uh, a little rest. There are more uh, tent up there too. So as we were arriving downward, uh, there were a lot of guides or people uh, looking for us and they brought us directly to this site. So we're waiting for the group to arrive and we arrived here about five minutes ago so that means there are at least five minutes behind us. So in any case, it's, uh, it was uh, quite a morning. We did about, uh, I believe, five kilometers uh, upward, three kilometers downward. And this afternoon, we're going back up for what I believe is another two, three kilometers up to bring us to 2,900 feet and then back down again. Somewhere around 3,600, that would be probably where we're going to be stepping at elevation-wise tonight. So higher than, than this past night. This past night we're at 3200, so we'll be sleeping at a higher elevation. Yeah. So I'm trying to get a view of the mountains surrounding us, but the clouds are still there. We still have some drizzles. But overall, the 
if you look this way, we have a pretty clear sky to the mountain on the side. So they have worked hard. Our dining area will be right there. And uh, now we're just taking it easy. I think they put a tent up for us to take a little nap <laughs> before we go out again this afternoon. It looks like it. Anyway, that's all for now. So this is day two of the Inca Trail. It's uh, 2 10 in the afternoon. We just had our lunch. This that was our site, campsite for uh, lunch today. For a number of people, actually, it's also their site for overnight. And uh, they are having a much longer day tomorrow, as opposed of us having uh, a long day today and a shortest one tomorrow. So right now it's all uphill as we're heading a direction for two kilometers. That will bring us to around 39.50 meter high. So we're heading up. And uh, that's the second high pass of the day. Two kilometer up. Or actually say, um, yeah, two kilometers going straight up. Not, not really straight up, but that will bring us to about 250 meter higher than where we started at after lunch. So I'm taking my time here. I can see some of the people there. I wanted to videotape some of the valley, but it's except for a few around here, they're really covered by by clouds. There we are. And that was our camp. So it's 2.25 uh, in the afternoon, uh, we left uh, 20 minutes ago from our lunch campsite over there somewhere. And we have climbed all the way up here already, with some pretty awkward steps, as we can see here. Crooked, mm -hmm. pretty uh, scary stuff at times, and if it was raining hard, I'd be really scared. <laughs> Now you are just half scared. <laughs> but now yeah. you are with good friends, you know, we take care of you. Right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so there we have, we have uh, Barb and Richard and Becky and Matthew making their way up carefully because that's what is the, the rule around here. Be careful. One but what of you? One step at a time. One step at a time. So we can see the path that we, we took. And further up is the path that brought us down from the dead woman's pass. And there we go. Perfect. So it's uh, too early. We left about 25 minutes ago. And we want to reach 3,950 meter, meters high for the second pass, high pass of the day. So, day two on the Inca trails, just past 3 o'clock, that means we have been gone, we left at 6.37, so it looks like eight and a half hours ago, and we have come to the settlement, after just climbing steady, steady since our lunch, we were to climb in total two kilometers, those are the ancient uh, Inca trails, where uh, on day one they were uh, restored so this is why maybe those are a lot more awkward than what we went through on the first day and up to the day pa the uh, dead woman's pass they're pretty awkward actually to walk on and you have to be careful all the time and when you go down it's even worse so this is the settlement, Inca settlement, one of them. So we're waiting for the group to arrive and uh, Boy Victor will talk to us about this as well. As I say right now, I'm just looking at time. It's, it's about 3.05 in the afternoon. We have some uh, di drizzle and a bit of wind. But overall, it's not so bad. And uh, so we're gonna go inside soon and just do a view. What a beautiful view, we're at the uh, settlement on our way to the uh, second high pass of the day. It's about uh, 3.10 in the afternoon. 
this is where we came from one of those uh, little uh, cab in the area where we had lunch now I can see one of the pieces of them means outpost or lookout point so uh, watch that one okay. so one day many pilgrims were crossing for this way you know they didn't get much nature and so here basically there were like one or two farmers living and controlling all the time the people passing by this effect Here we can see a, like a small balcony to look out to command the landscape and we can see also a single building down to the bottom so the single building was already like a storage you know sell the crops not like a storehouse so that means here there are no any evidences about terraces requirement so these people who were surviving here who were living all year long so we're getting into crisis from the Sacred Valley, from different provinces, and these people basically were living here all year long. Yeah. So this is one of the theories, important lookout point or outpost. The other theory, this place maybe was such a resting place for the messengers, you know the Chaskis. The Chaskis were young people who were participating in this competition like marathons, the marathon competitions, to be qualified, you know, as a chaskis. So chaski means messenger. And these guys were running, bringing information from different kind of points and connecting each of these satellites. So maybe the chaski was or the resting places for the messengers were located every 20 or 30 kilometers. Okay, so that means, according to the different investigations of the early historian, the early historian of the year 1600, 1700, and also von Hagen, one of the important European archaeologists, suppose these guys may have 15 to 20 kilometers per hour. So huh? that's the statistic. Wow. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, approaching the relay system. Do you know relay system was if one guy was running like a couple of hours, he covered between 20 to 30 kilometers, and the other guy already waiting to get the message, and then keep running away. <laughs> yeah, so that was the technique, relay system. This is also one of the techniques why the king had the privilege to get fish, because trout fish is originally from Canada. You know, trout fish was introduced to Peru at the beginning of the year 1900. Okay, it's not a long time ago yet. So that means that these people maybe used to have other kind of fishes in these rivers, but from the ocean, according to the other historians, so the Chaskis also were in charge to bring fish for the king. Because the king had the power anyway. He was, you know, the leader from all the sinking territories. So that was one of the privileges of the king. So, in a colonial time, the Chesky service, Senores, is still working. So that's why, from Cusco going to the north, that's Quito, now actually Ecuador, the distance is 2,400 kilometers. In how many days you think the Chaskis approaching the relaying system cover all that distance? Between nine ten days. Okay? Nine to ten days. So that means these guys were running all the time during the day and also at night. The whole time. And the messages maybe were like record keepers, you know, ropes with many strings hanging looks like abacus, yeah, like record keepers 
and also they used to have the iconographies okay because the iconographies Spanish would have been a kind of written language you know written language system because each of these symbols used to have different a specific uh, significant okay each of these symbols the iconographies so that was looks like Egyptians do you know the, the, the Egyptians used the hieroglyphs so in Inca time they used the iconographies looks like hieroglyphs so that was maybe senores, the written language that these people had yeah so this kind of information the Chaskis were taken and then in each of the settlements there were these guys were in charge to describe each of these symbols. So that uh, the people from the novel class people we find the So it's uh, three thirty six, that means we left exactly nine hours ago as we're looking at the settlement, Inca settlement, as we're trying to reach the second eye pass of the day. And uh, this is the view from the camp where we were at lunchtime earlier. And if I was to go further up that's where we were coming down earlier from the dead woman's pass. But the clouds tend to be a bit low and that may make the picture not as nice. So as the group are coming up, right here. Those are the Inca trail, the original Inca trails. Stones and everything, so that's why it's so awkward. You know it's going to close in. That's all the original stuff. And uh, see there are clouds all over there. But it is the beautiful settlement I'm looking at right here. And we see as the groups come in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at this. All right, very nice. Day two of the Inca Trail, it's four o'clock. It means that we have been on the trek today, hiking uh, for nine and a half hours, minus uh, time for lunch bit of rest time we stopped at a settlement where Victor gave us some explanation but still it's been nine and a half hours since we left the camp this morning and we're looking in this direction here but what I found is a little lake at uh, about uh, 2,900 meters high there's a little lake and those are the stairs that we just keep on going up and up and up Apparently we're, we're very close to the uh, second high pass of the day. And I say it's just past four o'clock now. So it's 4.20 and we have reached the second high pass of the day at 3,950 meters high. <laughs> Not much of, of excitement in terms of the view, but... And there are clouds all over. But this is the second pass, high pass of the day. And over there, there's a bit of a sign I can grab my hands on just to show. But I didn't see anything about the uh, altitude. Like this. I think you might give a name to the second high pass. And uh, so this is the sign as we were going up. Run Kuraki and whatever that is. Paramo Moy. Anyway, so we have just reached the second high pass of the day. We made it! This is the top. Officially the top. Well, just over here. So this is the top, the second high pass. It doesn't look that impressive as we, as I make my way back again. So as you came up those stairs, you enter here, you see all those stones again, by the thousands, and there we are. This is our second high pass. Perfect. Day two of the Inca Trail is 4.45. PM and I came across we came across this beautiful lake or okay. kind of a lake as we're making our way down to uh, campsite number two and this is the kind of stairs that we had to navigate all crooked 
and uh, for the, actually here it's not too bad there were some police out there it was pretty miserable and as we look here again and I try to focus really when you come down here this is where you're looking down at so you have to look really I mean you don't have really any footing until you try to figure out every step which one you want to have your footing on because it's not always obvious trust me all right so we'll carry on now well it's 5 50 p.m and we have finally made it to campsite number two when i say finally it means that when we came down 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 from the second pass we were coming at a wide turn one was going straight up one was going straight kind of down and that was the direction to the campsite what we didn't know was that we have to walk about two kilometers at least to make it here and there was no obvious sign of life for those two kilometers so really you know there was time we were wondering whether we had missed something or were we did we miss a turn did we misunderstood anything because we're at the head of the pack uh, for quite a distance in any case we made it as I say we started this morning at 637 and we arrived 550 that means that we have been uh, basically uh, hiking for 11 and a half hours on day two of this Inca Trail I'm taking a video before it get too dark now there are other groups also camping there and we're among the farthest away and there was a, a tenting area right over there some people have arrived like us we were, we were actually we had turned back on the I at some point because we thought that this thing was unreal that we had to go that far to get our campsite from the Inca Trail uh, main route and indeed it is like two kilometers away just to make it here it's a beautiful sight mind you but it's really off course by quite a distance we have a view if it wasn't for uh, the fact it's almost uh, darkness and it's cloudy we don't get to see very well there's Victor so it's a beautiful sight I must have uh, misunderstood something about you <laughs> so we're gonna enjoy a cup of tea huh? all right I'll be right there So today we're Saturday, October 6, 2012. It's 6.27 in the morning and we're starting day three of the Inca Trail. This is our campsite number two as I'm just looking backward. This tent where the fellow is there was our tent for the night, number 17, which was the same as for the first day. And those are all the five tents for the, um, for the four couples and also for the two uh, guides and uh, we're going to have breakfast uh, shortly and uh, look at the beautiful mountain that we full of snow all white earlier when we got up there was no clouds now we see the clouds are kind of moving in but still uh, at least it's not raining and it's rather cool but it's uh, acceptable cool so now we're getting ready for uh, breakfast which will be served shortly that's a beautiful my love yeah, it's all beautiful around here. So I would say it's probably almost, it's above freezing, but probably around maybe five degrees Celsius this morning. And uh, so we're looking forward for another day of trekking. This one should only last between five and five and a half hours. So that should go fairly smoothly. And although it's still the Inca Trails uh, steps, the one that are crooked, the one that are not that easy to manage to navigate and so we're going to go up a little and down a little and up and down pretty much for those five and a five and a half, half hour today and we should be done by one o'clock and then we'll have some resting time to get ready for the push tomorrow morning early to Machu Picchu 
So it's uh, certainly a beautiful weather to start the day. And uh, so this is our tenting area. This is the tradition every morning, breakfast now. We only have a few people in the tent. Some are outside. So this is where we are. Yes. So Ger and his wife are having their picture taken. My wife is the, the one taking the picture right now. Now there are other campsites as I point, pinpoint last night when we arrived it was starting to get dark but there are other campsites in the neighborhood we can hear the birds it's a nice little place away from everything I and mean, we're truly surrounded by the valleys if I do a 360 degrees uh, para, uh, para um, anyway view <laughs> I forget the word here again uh, panoramic I think was a word I was looking for view of our surrounding very very slowly it's all valleys so it's all very beautiful so I will stop my recording shortly for uh, this campsite yeah we're you want this view picture so it's uh, 724 we left at 708 day three of the Inca Trail and so far we have been going up uh, step after step after step for the last uh, basically 15 minutes and there's a burning settlement to look at in that direction so I make my way there trying to figure out who was missing so <laughs> Settlement, settlement, settlement. Down to the bottom. Yes. Next to the next to the campsite. Okay. Oh. Right okay. On the top. On the top. Oh yeah, there we are. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So there's a settlement way up there, above our uh, campsite number two. About the middle of the mountain there. There's a settlement right there. Give me a bit. So it's uh, 7.55, day 3 of the Inca Trail, and we're entering a cave. I just wanted to show the cave a little, but I will be taking a big picture of it, but this is a bit of a cave. It's probably too dangerous for me to do a video of the cave. I yeah, I know, I just want to show the entrance of the cave. It's yeah, too dark. Pick, pick, pick wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm just showing the entrance of the cave. Okay. Up here, down there, and our surrounding. This way. So we left about uh, 30 minutes ago. Until, this is Edwin, our guide. Maybe, uh, yeah, sure. There is there. There. <laughs> our wonderful guide <laughs> for the day. And it was <laughs> the entrance to the cave. Yeah, it's pretty stiff, so I cannot do a video at the same time, so that's it for now. Okay, Senor Gi, down to the bottom, we can see Urubamba Canyon and running Urubamba River, the same river that we have seen on the first day. Yeah, okay. So in front, it's Urubamba Mountain Range, the snow peaks. So right now, it's covered by the cloud. Right. And we're going in this location, on that direction, to Machu Picchu. Okay. The settlement. Right. Yeah. And soon, when we arrive to the top, mm -hmm. we're going to see Machu Picchu Mountain. Ah, okay. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. So less than half an hour to get to the top. Yeah? Very gentle. Uh, okay. It's uh, 8.19 in the morning. We left at 7.08. Okay. And we'll keep on going up. Day 3 of the Inca Trails. <laughs> Day 3 of the Inca Trail, it's 8.36 in the morning, that means we left an hour and a half ago and uh, we're making our ascent to the top and what's the name of that place we're going to? Uh, Puyo Patamarca Okay, Puyo Patamarca. there's no way we'll remember that Puyo Patamarca Okay, okay. <laughs> so we're very close to the top and uh, this is the direction we're taking now The steps are rather wet right now and uh, so we've been going up steps and down steps and there was one cave but it's not as difficult as yesterday the inclination is better it's not as as hard anyway and so we came from this is one of the direction we came from 
Chaka Kikocha. Okay. Chaka Kikocha campsite. Okay, very good. We see a couple of tourists coming here, at least one, I think. Or is it Porter? Like That's a Porter. He's a Porter coming to make his way. We have seen at least uh, 30 Porters, I think, since we left at uh, 7.08, an hour and a half ago. It's uh, 8.37 on my watch. The sky was pretty blue this morning it's when so we got beautiful. up. It's getting cloudy, so... But we never know. This cloud, those, the sky tend to change pretty quickly. Alright, so there's a porter there. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, it's getting foggy again, but Machu Picchu Town it was down there. Unfortunately, the clouds are moving again. But we have the Machu Picchu Town. So, keep going. More the direction. The clouds are coming again over it. Machu Picchu Town. It's uh, 8.47 in the morning, that means we left almost two hours ago. And we have reached pretty much the top, as we can see. There's Olivia there. And uh, I think there's some washroom. There's another. Oh, there's Machu Picchu again. You can see maybe a little better now. There's a town of Machu Picchu. Down there. Town of Machu Picchu. Unfortunately, I don't have any zoom on my camera, so it doesn't give justice. But this is town of Machu Picchu. Right there. So it's uh, day three of the Inga Trail, Saturday, October 6, 2007. It's 9 o'clock. That means we left uh, the camp almost uh, two hours ago and we have reached the uh, high pass for the day. So we're at the top of the valley names that was mentioned by our guide earlier, for which I don't recall. Maybe there's a sign here, let's see. I thought there was something. There we go, perfect. This is the name where we are. Perfect. So that's where we are. We're at the top. So we came down from different places. It was like a up and down type of uh, experience. It lasted uh, two hours. Unfortunately, it's pretty cloudy all around, so I don't get uh, the best view of all. But it's still uh, nice to be here. There we go. There's the name again on that post. So some people have put their temporary uh, tent around there. Those are the porters. So there we are. That's our last high pass before Machu Picchu tomorrow morning. So it's a bit cool this morning, but not too bad actually. It's probably the perfect weather for uh, hiking today. Day 3 Inca Trail, 9.15 in the morning, it means that we left over two hours ago and we're going to reach a settlement shortly. I just want to do a short video to show again how steep those uh, steps are as we're going down. Very, very steep. It's very awkward to uh, try to navigate those steps going downward. Tell them about the bamboo. It's so beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. Tell you can the st start the process, my link. Show, show me the way. Show you the way. Be careful there. Don't worry. I'm okay. I'm just going to... No, go, go. You oh, do it. Okay. You do it. I'm just... I you take a no, no, no. It's not a picture. That's the way to do it, my link. Yeah. This is quite something. And we just came from the stairs here. Everything is crooked. So yeah. those stairs are not I'm aligned properly. My love, I'm in here. Yeah, look. yeah, yeah, I see you, I see you. Very good. I like I like this area because there's a lot of grain. 
and all this bamboo stuff. All right. Sentiments. And thank you very much. You know, in terms of uh, bigger dietary meals, so these people were looks like um, Chinese, you know, vegetarian people mainly. They were enjoying meat, but it was just in a special occasions. And also, they were enjoying llama and alpaca only. Because lama and alpaca, according to the science, it's very low in cholesterol. So it was impossible to see at that time large people. Okay, these guys were mainly like skinny people, you know, by strong muscles. Yeah, and also they were enjoying this little grain, kiwicha and quinoa. Same as they were enjoying lupins. You know, lupins was also domesticated. It's legun, yeah, beans to get a lot of protein. Mm -hmm. So now, the science compare mm -hmm. lamb, chicken, mm -hmm. chicken eggs, mm -hmm. beef, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Compare with kiwicha and quinoa, these are small mm -hmm. grains. Why the science compare these cereals with these elements? Mm -hmm. Because have exactly the same protein. Mm -hmm. So that's lysine or lysina. Mm -hmm. We enjoy quinoa soup, mm -hmm. kiwicha, the amaranth, in breakfast, mm -hmm. so we'll be getting yes. exactly the same protein. And we don't need to enjoy it, a lot of chicken, a lot mm -hmm. of chicken eggs. Standings, six reservoirs. Mm -hmm. And also, we can see here a huge boulder right there. Mm -hmm. It was carved as well, just on the other side. Mm -hmm. If we look where the guy is standing right there with the bucket, mm -hmm. and we look down, it was carved part of this boulder. So that was a particular altar from these fountains, okay? Mm -hmm. So these people, in some occasions, were sacrificing animals, especially mm -hmm. llamas and guinea pigs, they were offering as well, mm -hmm. yeah? To the main god, and also, senores, to different sacred elements. You know, many people are still confused in terms about Quechua religious. Mm -hmm. The Quechua people, senores, never had many gods. Mm -hmm. They had just one particular main god. That maybe was Apu Tetsimuyu Wiracocha, which was the main god who created all this existence. In conclusion, we're talking about the same god mm -hmm. in terms of Christian or Catholic religious. Mm -hmm. The same god. Mm -hmm. Okay? The same person. Mm -hmm. Yeah? The same god. The difference is it is just different language different tradition, mm -hmm. different continent, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. different civilization. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about the same God. Mm -hmm. So now we talk about the water, the mother earth, mm -hmm. the sun element, mm -hmm. the moon, the stars, mm -hmm. rainbow, condor, puma, the snake. All these elements were considered just like sacred elements, not gods, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Sacred elements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why, when we are talking about the Andean trilogy here, we're going to see this necklace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. According to the Incan philosophy, senores, mm -hmm. it was assimilated already, this symbol, by uh, uh, so from pre-Incan civilization. Mm -hmm. The first civilization, Chabin culture, already had this symbol. Mm -hmm. Chabin culture, senores, come from 1300 years before our generation, before our period, so before Christ, mm -hmm. okay? 1300 years mm -hmm. before Christ. Mm -hmm. And the other civilizations like Paracas, Nazca, so come from like 5th, 7th, um, hundred years before Christ, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And other civilizations like Tiwanaku, Chimu, Mochica, so these civilizations develop the northern coast, the southern coast, different civilizations. Mm -hmm. Senores, develop already in our period, but the Incan culture come from only between 11 or year 1200, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But these civilizations, senores, so these people have been very smart. They assimilated the different knowledges mm -hmm the religious, mm -hmm. 
the symbols, the traditions from these pre Incan civilizations. Mm -hmm. So that means the Incan culture is going to be the complement from all these pre Incan civilizations. Okay? So this is the reason I think why this civilization needed just less than 500 years to get one day or to be one day such a, um, you know, powerful civilization, to get such a huge development. Okay? Because they assimilated everything. Yeah? So that's why, so notice we're talking, this symbol was also very useful by Tiwanaku culture. Mm -hmm. So it's exactly at 10 o'clock, we're looking at the uh, settlement for the last about half an hour now. And we're, Olivia and I decide to go to the top. Okay. Yeah, you can see the red and green building down to the bottom. All right. Nearby right. these buildings is yeah. the campsite. Okay. And above, so yeah. on the upper part is Intipata. So that's the next settlement to visit it. Ah, uh, okay. Before to get the campsite. Oh, I see. And th there is another one right. down to the bottom. Right, right. Yeah, that's close to the campsite. Right. So we visited that settlement after lunch. Ah, uh, okay. So after enjoying up. Okay. And Machu Picchu Mountain right in front. Right in front. And on the other side, the settlement. The settlement. Okay. So we are close. Only right. 12 kilometers. If we are going directly, so we are arriving today. 12 okay. Going down to Machu Picchu. But this this morning, to get a campsite, we'll be hiking down only six kilometers more. That's it. Okay. It's a small shelter, yeah. Yeah. So this is like a small shelter to take rest. Because oh, people climb. Because or? you can climb it up to the top of the mountain. Oh, we can do that after lunch. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, Barb. Hey, oh, I can't be any harder than yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay. right on the top is the bar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ice cold beer on yeah. the top top. Can you just go as well? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cappuccino, pina colada. Mm. Mm. <laughs> This is it's a view of the scenery, you know, with the sunshine. It's not that hot. It's no. <laughs> it's okay, the temperature. It's yeah. a good day for hiking. Yeah. <laughs> and easy to walk yeah, down <laughs> because <laughs> when the trail is just, you know, wet, it's a slippery and... Yeah. Much nicer when the water dry. Yeah, I slipped once. Only once. <laughs> I saw one of the porters slip, but it was right near the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and I saw here as well, one of the porters almost twisted his ankle. Oh. Almost with a heavy pack on, imagine. Oh. He would have, you know, broke his that, that must have. Day 3 of the Inca Trail, it's uh, 11.04. Yeah. That means we left uh, four hours ago. 
Uh, we're getting closer to closer to our campsite number three. And uh, right now we can see uh, uh, some kind of settlement there. Uh, Machu Picchu is actually just on the other side of that mountain over there. So we're getting very close. Actually earlier we heard a train. And the train is the one that bring us to Machu Picchu. If you see a little bit of green there, this is our uh, campsite for uh, tonight. Or in the area over there. So we're getting slightly closer. I may have a better view from here actually. And there's another little settlement as well down there. And this is the campsite for for today, day three. That's the one? And okay, tomorrow we'll be <laughs> going across the mountain to reach Machu Picchu. Okay. Look at a beautiful view from here. Just gorgeous. Like that one. If you know the structures are the trees. Oh. Yes. Uh, so to that settlement it is called Kandupata. So this settlement was discovered, so you know, imagine less than ten years ago. Oh. Huh. Oh. So like this, there are many settlements that are still over town. Uh -huh. And also still discovering the original trails. That's There is one more steep section, you know, staircases going down to sequences until the tunnel. There is another tunnel down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. After 10 minutes walking down these staircases, or less than 10 minutes, it's going to be more gentle the trail. So on that part, we can run. That's on the stairs just going down until the settlement. Yeah, because when we are up in the settlement, when we are up in the settlement, basically we'll be arriving almost to the upper part, and then we'll be going down the staircases. Can you see the staircases going down by the middle section? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. And then after arriving to the bottom, so the trail it's going to be gentle as well to get the campsite. So, so to be honest, it's going to be easier and easier the trail to walk. Yeah. This document used to have different, you know, purposes. Talking about Intipata, according to different investigations, Intipata was an important laboratory, important agriculture area to grow different crops, especially different varieties of corn according to the elevation or according to the ecosystems. Do you know? In Tipata, it's low elevation, we compare with Cuyo Patamarca, the last settlement. You know Cuyo Patamarca, the elevation is 3,600 meters above sea level. And that's higher than Cusco. But you know, if we want to get the best quality of potatoes, we need to grow up over 3,300 meters above sea level until 4,000 meters above sea level. So that's unbelievable, so notice how, how, uh, do you know how the potatoes might grow on that base. One of these specific potatoes is maca. You know, maca, it's a kind of potato, and it grows over 4,000 meters above the ground. So maca, it has a lot of protein, it is considered like Peruvian Viagra. never grew up potatoes on this elevation because the elevation here is already 2,850 meters so that's low elevation for potatoes but if we talk about corn we can compare this settlement senores, with the Seged Valley because the beginning of the Seged Valley it's 3,000 meters above sea level and the end of this valley senores, it is Chachabamba and Choco Tree, two, two segments down to the valley. The elevation right there is 3,100 meters above sea level. Muy bien, señores. Please take pictures, keep moving, and we're going to finish to explain at lunch. So they come back. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, 12.40, pouring rain, 
we're all coming down from the settlement right here and uh, it's not easy I'll tell you this is not easy very slippery very crooked uh, steps you have to take your time in a big way not fun at all I will tell you that again it is not fun at all especially my wife and I we have our poncho and they keep on flopping towards uh, the front uh, which block our view of the next stairs um, just not fun at all <laughs> As I focus downhill here, so we're fairly close. We're about 25 minutes, maybe, from our campsite too. But we got uh, in the rain in a big way. So it's two o'clock. We're at the campsite number three. We arrive around uh, 105. We put all our stuff in our tent, and then we had uh, a bit of a drink and we had lunch so for a little while we had no rain but the rain uh, seemed to make uh, its uh, return as we speak and uh, otherwise uh, we're at a camp so it means we're hiking for six hours minus uh, the uh, stopover for set at the settlement for some information and a few stopover along the way and uh, now just a matter of uh, taking a rest until 4 and then uh, we're gonna go uh, visit a settlement nearby which apparently is only about like 10 minutes away we'll have supper at 6.30 tonight and tomorrow we have to get up at 3.45 for day 4 for the final push to Machu Picchu 3.45 till morning so things went well today it was uh, hard work I felt as we did about 2 kilometers going up but uh, we were doing 10 kilometers total today actually and we did an awful lot downhill and uh, it was very, very hard because those stairs, those steps those stone steps uh, are really uh, uh, pretty difficult to maneuver they're uh, curvy, the formation is very awkward and it's very, very hard anyway, so uh, that's all for now So today it's uh, Sunday, October 7, 2012. It's about 5 or 5 uh, a.m. We're up since about 3:40. The wake-up call was 3:45, but we got up slightly earlier, and we had breakfast around 4:15, uh, and we made it to the control point around 4:50. We're waiting for the control gates to open up at 5:30. So we made, were many groups lining up to go to the control point where we have to show our passport to make uh, our push towards uh, Machu Picchu it has been raining uh, since about probably 2 o'clock this morning we had a few little breaks here and there around 4.30 but now it's been uh, raining again quite a bit uh, since about uh, the last 15 minutes anyway so this is all for now so it's uh, 6.48 October 7, 2012, we have reached what is called the Sun Gate and we're looking down to Machu Picchu. If the clouds can just lift a little bit more, it will be perfect. But it is Machu Picchu as we're looking down. <laughs> this is part of it. Early morning break. <laughs> and this is called Sungate. Where 
James. Sir, can you take a picture oh, with the bus? Oh, forget that. Just turn around and look. Just turn around. Machu Picchu, looking down. I'm hoping the clouds can lift. Oh. I was like, you want me to move? I can't move any further back. I'll show, no, I'll show you. This is the train to Machu Picchu. Oh, nice. Can you make Yep, and this one. <laughs> yeah. It's going to lift, but we're a bit early. The funny thing, most places there's no clouds except there. <laughs> It's going to show up some a lot. Most of the training now. Again, this is Sangate. I'm looking at here. We're all waiting. When the sun hit the You take a picture of Sangate there? Are the people there anyway? Over there now we see more. Look, 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 right there. There's yeah. all an opening. Yeah. There's a nice opening there. The building. We have to go now. This is Machu Picchu now. We have to go. We have to go. We have to go. We have to go. Looking down at Machu Picchu. It's clearing big time, but we have to. Wait a few more minutes. Yeah, give me a minute. Oh, you can go. With my sandwich. It's clearing a lot more now. Come in, let's go. Let's be looking at Machu Picchu. Okay, look at the camera, the guys. At 7 a.m. Say hello. On this October 7, 2012. Good. Yeah, thank you. Give me love to Archie. Quite now. So we're looking at Machu Picchu on a clear view. It's about 7.15 in the morning. We're looking from just below the sun gate. Everything has cleared up now, so I got to have a, a view of the Machu Picchu. Okay, I guess they're waiting for us. Yeah, I'll be right there. Just take a little bit of a minute there and I will speed up. Because we have to show our... Okay. Oh, I didn't know I was So we're not Machu Picchu yet. We're getting closer and closer. It's, uh, I'm looking at my watch here, 7.30 in the morning. And we're getting very close now. We're making our descent towards Machu Picchu. We should be there in about half an hour. We came to this thing here, it was explained to me, but anyway, give us a bit of a view, I guess. But I'm not going up there right now, just uh, looking at it. And just looking around, and we can probably see. Actually, I think I can see Machu Picchu from here. Just going with my camera. I lost the cover of my, uh, DJ, uh, my camcorder, the small cover. I just lost it. I'm just making my way here. There's Machu Picchu. 
So, they're able to get Machu Picchu now. Alin, can you see Machu Picchu from here? Alin? Alin? You can see Machu Picchu here. Machu Picchu is right here. All right, so we're, we're very close now. We came down a fall an awful lot from earlier. I have to hold my camera, as you can. I lost the cover, my digital camera at Sungate. I guess uh, we were kind of in a hurry to leave, and I may have snapped a bit quickly, and my digital camera, the, that cover, somehow it's snapped open. So anyway, I'm looking at it. The mist is coming again. So this is my chance for a minute. So it's uh, officially on my watch, 7.45 and we're looking down at Machu Picchu. We have arrived. We, we've been through a ride of passage. Yeah. What are these lazy people doing, thinking they can just scamper no, over a sacred element? We've gone all the way around these bloody mountains to get here. They get here first, and we can't get a picture. Are you kidding me? No, I mean, normally we go to places like this, and we feel like tourists are slowing sailors up. But now they're like, no, they're like bloody tourists. Bloody tourists. Drop our bags here. Oh, drop our bags here. <laughs> Machu Picchu. We are here. 7:45, October 7, 2012. 2012. 7:45 in the morning. And this is the surrounding of Machu Picchu.